All right, this video is going to address the number E. What is E, the Euler number, named after the Swiss uh, mathematician? S on the calculator, E can be found above natural log. See, E to the X, it's right there. So I, if I hit uh, second E to the X and raise it to the first power, that's going to say what it is. E to the first is... 2.718. So there, there it is in all of its glory. And it doesn't stop there. It's an irrational number. It uh, never stops, never repeats. It just keeps going on and on forever. So hopefully we can understand why it does that. All right. So here we go. Basic idea. If you take any number and you multiply it by something larger than one, it's going to get bigger. So practical application of that, you go to Walmart and you buy something for 1987 and you multiply it by 1.0725. Well, that 725 represents the sales tax in Highland County, Ohio. Sales tax varies differently in different places, but so there's your original um, amount and you're going to add on 7%, 7 and a quarter percent. Boom, you pay $21.31. So if you multiply any number by something larger than one, it gets bigger. So if you have um, 1987, right, and you buy two of those items, well, that's a bigger number than one, so it doubles. So that's how much you would have. And then if you multiply that answer by 1.0725, then that's how much you would pay with the sales tax. Or I guess I could have doubled that one right there. So... Uh, what does this have to do with E? Another example. I'm um, getting closer to what it has to do with E. So let's say you buy a house for $125,000 and you um, live in an area where the average rate of increase is 3% more uh, for real estate. So 1.03 is adding three pennies to the dollar. All right, then we're going to uh, be in the house for 15 years. So what can be the expected growth in the house? Now, not all places grow this much. Uh, it kind of depends upon where you are and all that good stuff. Uh, boom. So that's how much the house would be worth after 15 years if it, if it grew at a rate of 3% a year. So it's 3% more and then 3% more and 3% more. It's compounded because you're getting 3% more on top of the 3% more and it, it grows pretty fast, exponential growth. So what does this have to do with E? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this premise of adding on to one, but we're gonna do it in a specific way. So here's how we're gonna do it. So we're going to take one and we're gonna add on 5% more. So 5% more is one out of 20. All right, so that's 5% more. And we can put any amount of money out here we want in front or any number. We're going to make it be 5% more. But we're going to do that 20 times. So we're going to make this match. And that's where E comes from is making this match this. So let's go ahead and type that into the calculator. So I'm going to do um, just some generic number like $1,000. So we put $1,000 in the bank. Okay, and we're going to get 5% interest. And we're going to compound that, uh, compound it yearly. So it's going to figure out 5% more at the end of the year. And we're going to do that for 20 years. So there's the 265, uh, two, right? Well, E, remember, was 271. So we're kind of we're kind of getting close to that. Well, let's do this more times. So we're going to do $1,000. And we're going to do one plus one divided by 100. And then we're gonna raise it to 100 times. So we are going to have 1% um, more, one out of 100 is a penny more. So it's 1% more for 100 times, for like 100 years on $1,000. Okay, well, there's you're, you're, you're gonna have $2,703, which is 2.7 and change more. So this was 1.65 more and this is 2.7 more. Well. That's not, it's more money, but it's not like crazy amount more money, even though it's 100 times versus, you know, uh, 20 times. But what's happening here is that's getting closer to one and that just keeps getting bigger. So what if we did $1,000, um, one uh, plus one divided by, let's do it a thousand 
So that would be a tenth of a penny. But we're going to do this for a thousand years. So to the power of one thousand. Okay, so we got those match, right? And that's where E it comes from is making those match. So there's the 2.7. So E is really 2.718, and there's 2.716. So what do you have? You have $1,000 becoming this. So you have 2.716 times more money than what you did originally. So what we do is we go 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. So this matches, and we make x really large. Well, the way that we make x really large is we say the limit as x goes to infinity. So we, we're putting larger and larger numbers in there. So we put 100, 100, 1,000, 1,000, 10,000, 10,000, a million, a million, a billion, a billion, right? And the answer to that is E. So let's go ahead and type that into the calculator. So I'm going to go to um, y equals, and we're going to do 1 uh, whoops, I need parentheses first. Left parenthesis, 1 plus 1 divided by 1 over 100 uh, to the power. Oh, no, 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 I don't want I don't want 100. I want to make it generic. I want x. Uh, so we go 1 uh, plus 1 divided by x, because I want that to change uh, to the power of x. Okay, I got locked into doing 100. So um, we're going to now... Compare that to the actual e, the e, the 2.71. So we have second uh, e to the first power. So that's a constant. And we'll see how these become each other for larger numbers. Uh, window, we're going to go from 0 to 100 on the x. Scale of 10. And 0 to 3, because e doesn't get any more than 3. And a scale of 0.1. And graph. So there's, there's the 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. So it grows really fast, and then it levels off. So as x gets larger and larger, the change isn't as much. And then what's going to come in next is the horizontal line E. So basically, as x gets larger, the two things are basically the same. So this here is turning into E. And you can see that graphically because they're getting closer and closer. Well, let's look at this in table form. So I go to second table set. And I'm going to change my table to ask. And I'm going to go to the table. So if x is 1, uh, that's the 1 over 1 plus x to the x power would be 2. And then there's the e to the x. Let me zoom in here a little closer. And refocus. And if I go to 10, the, it's quite a ways apart, but they, it's, it's still kind of in the ballpark there, even just making it 1 over 10 and then to the 10th power, and then 20, 50, 100. And now they're, they're starting to really hone in and get closer. But if we did 1,000, then they're really, really close to each other. And then they're only off by a thousandth. And then if we did um, like a million, then the table shows that they're like the same. So if I go up here and I look here, there's the 71828, etc. If I go over here, then that's the calculator's estimate for E. And again, it doesn't stop here. It keeps going on and on forever. As X gets larger and larger and larger and larger, you can get closer and closer estimates to what E is. Um, a couple things that are interesting about E is the graph of E so I'm going to go back to my graphing thing here. So the, the graph of E is uh, an exponential function. So we do y is equal to e to the x. Creates this exponential function like this. And what's cool about it is the fact that the derivative, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. It's the same function. So the y value, the y value at that point is also the instantaneous rate of change. So this point is growing at the rate of the y value. So the y value and the instantaneous rate of change are the same. That's pretty mind-blowing.
All right, so that means that if I have uh, e to the x, so I'm going to go second and e to the x, and I'm going to raise it to the x power, I'm going to graph that on uh, zoom and number 6, which is zoom standard. Here's the e to the x function, and it goes up and up and up and up, and so the y value is the instantaneous rate of change. So if I, if I go to trace and I put in 0, 0, 1, so it is, has a slope, an instantaneous rate of change of 1 there, and it kind of looks like it, slope of 1. Let me do zoom square, and it'll square it up so it looks more like a slope of 1. Zoom square is number 5. So if we're, we're booking along here, and we're at trace, uh, needs to finish going trace and 1, 0, 1 has a slope of 1. If you go to 2, uh, enter, and the slope there would be 7. So the y value matches the instantaneous rate of change. And if we went to 1, then that's, that's what e is, and the slope right there is 2.7. It's the only function that does that, which is pretty amazing. So the instantaneous rate of change on e to the x is e to the x, and it's the, the y value, the output of the function. Um, also, if you have the differential equation, dy dt is equal to ky, it's the most basic famous differential equation, y is a population. So it can be a population of geese, it could be a population of pennies, it could be a population of bacteria or whatever. So the instantaneous rate of change, that's what this says, is proportional to the population. So the population is small, right? The population is small, the change is small. The population is bigger, the change is bigger. And that's what that says. And the solution to this differential equation is y is equal to y initial e to the kt, which is your standard uh, exponential growth equation. And the base of that exponential growth equation is e. So e uh, comes from this idea of having this, this battle between the 1 on 1 over x to the x power. So this is becoming really kind of close to 1, and this is getting really super big, and you keep doing that over and over again, and it settles in at the Euler number E, 2.718 and change.